Hi, I'm Michael Lynn, Policy Director of the Economic Growth Program at the New America Foundation. And my guest today is Pat Choate to talk about his new book, Saving Capitalism, Keeping America Strong. Uh, thank you, Pat. Mike, good to be here. Well, let's begin by talking about something in the news, uh, the tire controversy between uh, the U.S. and China. Uh, what does this uh, signify in the context of the struggle that you perceive between uh, what you call Anglo-American or Anglo-Saxon market capitalism and uh, st rival forms of state capitalism pursued by other countries? Well, this is a very rich decision on uh, policy matters. It's a historic uh, decision, really, because we're going to get some answers to some questions. Uh, I write in this book that the great challenge in the 21st century is not communism versus capitalism. It's going to be state capitalism versus market capitalism. We're a market system where the means of production are privately owned uh, and decisions are privately made. China is a system of, uh, in which the means of production are owned by the government and run and controlled by the government. And what we see around the world are economies such as Japan, South Korea's, Taiwan's, and Germany, where you may have some private ownership, but you have a great deal of government mm -hmm. control. So when an American corporation is competing against one of the state capitalists, it's, they're really competing against the government and uh, the corporation. Now, in this particular tire case, what we have is a situation in which China, as part of its agreement to come into the World Trade Organization, agreed that the United States had what is known as a safeguard provision, a special safeguard provision. Safeguard provisions are very common in all trade agreements, and they basically say if for some strategic reason or catastrophic region reason that uh, imports overwhelm an American industry. It doesn't have to be done because it's unfair or anything else. Just the simple fact that the industry and the jobs are going to be wiped out. You can have a, a short period of time in which the industry can recoup. And the best success of that is the Harley-Davidson motorcycle company in the early 1980s were being overwhelmed by imports. Uh, uh, Ronald Reagan gave them a four-year period of time in which they could catch up. They did catch up. Harley-Davidson uh, is now a major worldwide company, does six billion in sales, employs thousands of people, uh, et cetera. That's the idea. This is happening in tires. And so basically the steel workers, who represents the tire makers, asked for that sort of a period of time, uh, a safeguard. Uh, the International Trade Commission looked at the facts and decided that the facts were such that they complied with the law and they gave uh, that uh, time period. Now, the Chinese government has turned around and threatened retaliation. Uh, and you now have commentators that are worried about a trade uh, war. Well, the issue is bigger than that, really. The Chinese government in 2000 agreed to a law that would be exactly like this. They agreed to this provision as a condition of getting in uh, to the U.S. market. They have also not only threatened retaliation, they have threatened that they may dump some of the Treasury bonds or they may not buy more Treasury bonds. To me, the interesting question, is China, a communist-led government, that in 5,000 years has no history of a judicial system, has no history of a constitution or articulated rights, is it capable of obeying rules that are set by the world? If, if China is incapable of keeping its treaty commitments and if China is incapable of following rules and if China refuses to accept a judicial judgment from the World Trade Organization, then China is imperiling the global trade system and the United States must find a different way. The second question is if China is using its capacity to loan to the United States and the money it holds as a threat over U.S. policy, then the loan of that money is much more than a commercial activity. It's a political uh, activity. And the United States should immediately, uh, at whatever cost to this country, in pain or economics, bring our budget into deficit so we're not dependent 
um, borrowing money from central governments that would use that as leverage uh, on our decision making. Well, of course, China's main purpose in buying American uh, debt is uh, to keep the currency artificially undervalued. To make Absolutely. It more competitive. And, and gain a competitive advantage and get our industry. Let, let me ask you about your first point about a rule based uh, global system. If not only the U.S., uh, or, or, or if uh, not, the U.S. is the only major power that is committed to a truly rule oriented liberal global trading system, if, as you argue in your book, uh, the Europeans support Airbus and they have various industrial policies. The Japanese, you know, support their industries. Right. China and we do too, although we do so in a sort of guilty way. Mm -hmm. Is is it worth reconsidering the very goal of a rule-based as opposed to a result-based trading system? I uh, uh, is is it worth saying that look, every major country is going to want to have at least some part of the global aerospace industry. That's right. Why not, why, be, yeah, why not be honest about this instead of pretending that, well, you're cheating, so we're retaliating. Why not just be honest and work out some kind of shares of uh, global production? No, I, feel, I, I think that's where we should go. I argue that in this book that basically we should say uh, trying to persuade other countries to adopt an American style market communism, a uh, market uh, system has failed. Uh, they don't want it. They want their own system and that's perfectly fine. So let us, us stop this missionary work, economic missionary work, and set about a what I call a tailored trade strategy. Let's tailor our strategy with Europe to the way the Europeans want to do it. Let's tailor our strategy with Russia the way they want to do it. And the same with Japan. Uh, this is not... Uh, so it's bilateralism and it's bi our, our plurilateralism, right. 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 Uh, et cetera. But the objective is to balance our trade accounts, uh, is to expand trade for the benefits that are there, and to move away from uh, these moralistic attacks on each other for this is fair, or this is unfair, or you're cheating or not. Look, this is simply business. Right. And let's just do it as business with contracts where we say a, th uh, a third of our apparel industry uh, or market can be filled by imports. And uh, other countries can compete mm -hmm. on uh, what that is. Two thirds will be held for workers here. Uh, Sixty percent of the production of our automobiles will be for automobiles that are made in the United States. Now, it may be a German-owned factory, it may be a Japanese or a Korean, but we want, let's say, something like 90 percent of the components and the engineering and other work done here. If you're going to well, sell it here, other, make it here. Other countries do that. China uh, oh, has various agreements with corporations. And Japan. And domestic Japan. content training their people as a, as a condition. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, other countries understand that you just don't leave to the vagaries of markets where people will engage in mercantilist activities. They just don't leave their futures uh, to that. And that's what we do. What I propose in this book are six game-changing actions that we can take to, that will allow us to deal with the world the way it is. And, you know, Americans in the past uh, were very practical uh, people. It was called uh, Yankee ingenuity. They would deal with right. reality and they would uh, uh, prosper. We need to go back to that ethos. Well, briefly, what are the six? The six are we must regulate the money industry mm -hmm. and bring it back to investment rather than speculation. The second uh, that we must do is we must change our tax system. We've run the limits on what a corporate or a uh, personal tax sh should do. We should go to a value-added tax. If we do that, uh, we'll wind up with a tax rate, effective tax rate, of about $24 billion. Uh, we will balance our budget with that. We'll eliminate ch a cheating. We will eliminate about a half of a percent of the GDP just in all the lawyers and accountants that uh, we have to uh, deal with. We will end the VAT discrimination against American manufacturers through the trade system where uh, other countries mm -hmm. will give a, a rebate on exports and impose a VAT on uh, ours. That's about a 370 plus billion disadvantage. Right, so, so financial re-regulation, uh, shift towards the VAT in finance. Uh, in, in, in uh, a realistic uh, trade policy, uh -huh. as uh, we've, we've been discussed. uh, discussing here. 
uh, I call for a massive national infrastructure investment. Mm -hmm. Our infrastructure is wearing out faster and it's being replaced. We've got about a $2 trillion backlog. If we'll take that on over a five-year period, we can create 7 million jobs. And our country will be prepared for the next round of uh, development. Our infrastructure will work. Uh, it, it, it's just a no-brainer uh, to do that. Uh, the innovation policy. Innovation policy is that we strengthen the patent system where you can get a patent fast, you can get it cheap. Uh, it uh, Once it's issued, uh, it's over the life of it. You're not, you cannot be challenged unless you cheated in uh, getting uh, the patent. On certain high national priorities such as green, energy, uh, defense, medical, uh, that we give an extended life to a patent. In other words, mm -hmm. that we try to bring uh, billions, hundreds of billions into the U.S. because this is the best place in the world to and, do that. And you advocate reforms in social insurance as well. I do. Uh, what I uh, call for there is extending uh, Medicare uh, to include everyone. It's far cheaper than all of the plans that are being put forward. Secondly is that we create a new pension system where you tie the pension to the worker rather than the job, where you actually build up pensions all through your life uh, rather than have the stop, start, stop, start uh, activity. And that we put in a long-term unemployment insurance program that's based on real insurance uh, principles where employers and workers pay uh, for this. But if you're left out of work for two years or three years, uh, and it's not your fault, and you cannot find jobs, that you don't have to worry about that your family's going to be thrown out on the street, that you're not going to be able to keep your uh, car, and that your kid is not going to be able to pay for lunch at school. Well, a lot of ideas in a book on a very uh, timely topic, uh, Saving Capitalism. Uh, thank you for joining us. Pat thank Schoen. you for having me Appreciate as a guest, Mike. <laughs>